Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use MQTT with the Lua programming language, all by using the XEdge32 firmware on the ESP32. Now, this is an extension of a previous video where I showed you how to write your first Lua script on this device using the XEdge32 firmware. So if you haven't already, please be sure to watch that video because this is an extension of that where we'll be using the XEdge32 environment to write a script in Lua that will allow us to connect to an MQTT broker and send messages using this protocol, which as you know, is a very popular protocol in the IoT space that allows you to communicate between embedded devices very seamlessly. And thankfully, it's all free to get started using the Hive MQ broker. So I'll be showing you how to set up the account, how to write the script. We'll be going over the script at a high level. And by the end of it, you will be able to use MQTT on the device in the Lua programming language in a matter of just a few steps. So before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's just go ahead and create our new project to run this script today. So we could just go to xedge32.local as we went over in part one to access the IDE and connect to the ESP32 to be able to use use X edge. And now that we're here, we can actually just go ahead and create a new folder. We'll just call it YouTube MQTT part one. And then within this folder, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a new app. And then we could just call this YouTube MQTT part one app. And right now we could just start it as we can just keep the configuration as is and we could just save initially. Now within this app, we can actually put in the code we would like today. So I'm just going to do new file and I'm just going to say MQTT test.xlua. So this is an executable Lua file. And now within this file, we see we have some boilerplate code. What I want to do is I already wrote this in another app and I'm just going to copy it over and I'll be going over it at a high level. And so I'll just paste this in here. So this is the exact code. It will be linked down in the description below. So you do not have to copy this line by line. This is just very simple code to send one message to the MQTT broker and then receive that message. So what we'll be doing is we'll be publishing a message and we'll be listening to a message by subscribing to that specific channel to be sure that we can publish and subscribe to HiveMQ. But before I go over the script in a little more detail, the first thing I want to do is we actually want to make a Hive MQ account. If you haven't, please do. And you can just go to a cluster you created after you've created an account. So let me show you how that looks from the beginning. So console.hivemq.cloud. So give that a moment to load there. So once you go to this link and after you create an account, you should see your clusters here. Let me go ahead and exit that. You can see I already have a serverless free cluster, which is nice. You do not have to pay for anything. It's completely free to get started with no credit card information. And first we just want to select manage cluster and we want to go to access management and we want to create a credential. So we can just call this test user and we can just call the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and we could just put a letter. So at least eight characters, numbers. Okay. So this is the password one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a, and then a, and same thing here. Of course, this is sensitive information. So if you are using this for production purposes, be sure to keep that password safe and permission will just allow it to do all of it. So publish and subscribe and we'll go ahead and create this credential as well. So that is the credential for a test user. So now that we have a user, we should be able to use this user within our script to be able to access the, the broker. So let's go back to our script and show you what I mean by that here. So let's just go down. So this is the segment of the script where we actually create the MQTT object. So we're going to require MQTTC and we're going to do the dot create method. And the first things first, we're going to pass in this broker URL. So you can actually get that from the overview here. And you could just copy this cluster URL there and paste it in there. And then next we want to pass in an on status and on publish. We'll go over that in a second, but these are just some methods that apply to certain processes when doing MQTT. And next here we have secure true. So we want to do TLS for a secure connection and that is enabled on port 8883. So be sure to keep that there as well. And then we want to pass in the username and the password. So we called it test user. 
and the password was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then that was A, A, I believe so. We could just go ahead and double check that in the access management for the user. So that is test user. So we have our URL, we have our username and password within the script. And right here we have a client identifier. So this is just a unique client ID for your connection to a broker because you need this in the MQTT protocol. You do need some identifier when you are communicating with the broker. Really, you could set this to whatever you like. Here, we just keep it something very standard. And if you want, you can design that as you please. So that's how we create the MQTT object to actually to actually connect to the broker. And as I mentioned, we have those on status and on publish methods that we have above where we define certain aspects. So first of all, the on status is required here because this is a function that essentially handles the status updates of the MQTT connection. So when you connect or some change in the connection happens, what happens is this function gets executed as a callback and if everything is proper, we should get a successful callback here where this function will actually print successful new connection when connecting to the broker. Otherwise, if there's some issue with your connection, maybe a bad password or bad username or that sort of thing, you will see an error here. The next function we have is on publish. So this is a really simple function in our case that simply handles the incoming messages from the subscribe topics. So we will be subscribing to the same topic we're publishing to. And once we receive that message, we should execute this, this callback function, which will print receive the topic, the payload, and some other properties as well that we receive from this, this method. And then finally, after all that definition, what we have down here is we just have a print statement for debugging. And then we're just going to first subscribe to that topic and I call it my topic. Of course, you can once again, design this as you please. And then we publish as well to that topic. And the message we are publishing is just testing. And then we just have a sleep here to make sure we have enough time to actually receive and print that message for our example today. And then finally, we disconnect. So this is good practice when you are working with MQTT is to be sure to actually disconnect once you are done processing, because if you do not, that can lead to some issues later on. Okay, so now that we have everything ready to go, we can go ahead and run our application. So we could just go to the app config folder under our application, and we can go ahead and select running to begin to run the script. And if we did everything successfully, we should see some good messages in the logs that indicate we received the message. So let's go ahead and check that and save it. And we can go ahead and close this. And then upon investigating the logs, we can see right away that we did have a successful connection and we were able to see the message that we actually published to that my topic channel and the message we publish is testing. So it looks like we did everything successfully and we're able to send our first MQTT message to the Hive MQ broker in the Lua programming language thanks to the XEdge32 firmware provided to us by Realtime Logic. So there you have it, everyone, your first MQTT Lua program. You saw how incredibly seamless it was to get that started thanks to the XEdge32 firmware and the ease of use of the Hive MQ cloud software as well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and all related documentation will be linked down in the description below for you to go over if you are having trouble following along. Just know this is the tip of the iceberg of what you could do with XEdge32. So let us know what you wanna see in the comment sections down below. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.